Hello, Kokomi here, and welcome back to another episode of Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Last time, we explored the Dragon Roost Mail Center place and sorted letters for two people, and we threw a girl into a wall. Sounds about right. Today, we are heading into the first dungeon of the game. Welcome to Dragon Roost Cavern. It's pretty small, right? Right? There's totally nothing behind this wall at all. You know, if Medley came through here, she could she should at least have the courtesy to leave this undone so we don't have to do it again, but okay. I see all this is, Medley. Be us with it. You can see uh one thing I definitely recommend is well one I recommend grabbing the stick because the fire won't stay lit forever but if it does actually become unlit you can unlit if the fire goes out you can just go up to this uh torch and reignite it but yeah it, uh thing I recommend if you're fighting multiple enemies and you're worried about being hit is when you're attacking just do a quick spin attack you can do it by rotating the control stick like so uh, because that will clear everything around you. It is a good way to just get multiple enemies off of you. Because sometimes when you're attacking a single enemy, another enemy can come up and hit you from behind. You can't do a lot about it, but you can spin attack and, na and nail them before they hit you. Yeah. But yeah, so what we want to do is we see these torches that are lit. And, well, who says we can't? But obviously not having stuff on fire is a terrible thing. We need to set everything on fire. And when we do, we get rewarded with the chest. And yes, you can just chuck these sticks. I love how you could just go like, yeah, I'm done with this. And wow, Link is a good throwing arm, I have to say. With that, we get a small key we can use to lock doors. Yeah, keys are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we have this jar here. And if I may demonstrate what this jar does. We want to walk into it. It does absolutely nothing except it spews us back out. Don't worry, it may or may not have a use later. You see these special looking jars? These have water in them. Keep that in mind. You, you don't get anything else out of them. No collectibles, nothing. Uh, but they do have water and that'll be important for something later. That. You can see things are heating up now. We've arrived in the center of Dragon Roost Cavern. And with that, we're really getting into the dungeon now. I have to say, I love this dungeon. This is easily one of my fir favorite first dungeons in any Zelda game. It's probably my favorite first dungeon in Zelda games. It feels... It doesn't feel like it holds your hand too much or tries to explain too many things to you, but it's still got like that sense of adventure and whatnot, and we can't go through there because we just used our key. Because God forbid we use a key twice in a row. Uh, and for those who say, well, no, we would just need to get the specific key for it. That wouldn't work because you can use any key you get on any door. Just the keys are one use. They, I guess they just like snap in half. It's some not good material they're made out of. And yes, you don't want to touch the lava. But yes, I really like this dungeon. Here we have a new enemy. These enemies tend to be very annoying to new players. I know they're very annoying to... My sister and my mom and I when we played this game when I was younger. Uh, thankfully, unlike Breath of the Wild, these bombs do not blow up the duck blank. Uh, these bombs do not blow up the moment they are in super heated areas, which I very much appreciate. Though I'll admit, the first time I pulled out a bomb arrow in, uh, in Death Mountain and it blew up on me, I was laughing because I was not expecting that. Uh, but that we are not talking about Breath of the Wild, we are talking about this game. Yes, I like. I really like this dungeon. It, it just, it feels very. I feel like some Zelda dungeons they have the issue of, or at least for the first dungeon in the game. And yes, we were getting to see. I know I'm just getting interrupted by everything now. Uh, we could throw this, and it creates a platform for us. 
this will go away after a bit, so we can't take too long. And yeah. And I like how Link just sort of slides up the wall. I didn't think I was going to make that. You can, when you know Link's jump distance, you can sort of judge how long. I really shouldn't be messing around because I'm on limp. I can't restore my health. But yeah. So where was I? Yeah, I feel like a lot of first Zelda dungeons say, and of course I'm going to get interrupted by the chest, but I'm just going to speak through it. Uh, a lot of Zelda, first Zelda dungeons, they tend to hold your hand a lot. I feel like Skyrim Sword does that. I feel like Ocarina of Time does that. Majora's Mask, not so much. Uh, but Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess does, but it doesn't! Yeah, Twilight Princess, it's first dungeon, it does hold your hand, but it doesn't hold your hand. It, it doesn't in a little bit of a neat way, which I kind of appreciate. But this feels more like an actual dungeon while still being a beginner tutorial area. And I really like that about this place. I, yes, I believe if you have a little momentum for rolling. Now this is probably one of the most jerkish things. If you just started climbing up this ladder, that thing would hit you while you're on the ladder. I can't tell you how many times I've literally just been climbing up only for it to drop on me. And I'm not going to do that this time. You come down here. Come on, I can wait. Actually, I would say I have all day, but I really don't because I try to keep these videos at a certain length. I'm gonna take a picture of you. How do you like that? No, it wasn't a good picture. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, as I start to climb this, it completely missed. And generally, I find you're a bit further up and I don't notice it. Uh, so, like, if you're up here and it jumps off, it will hit you and you'll be knocked back. And it's especially dangerous on hero mode when you can't heal, says the guy who's jumped into lava multiple times. And here we have some inconspicuous wooden fences, nothing wrong here. And then this guy jumps out and tries to attack you, but I knew he was there. Still, it's there to just sort of uh, teach you that, yeah, enemies can jump out of jars and stuff. We will be seeing that a bit more through this dungeon. I really hate how A is swing and B is throw when our sword is normally mapped to B. That really bugs me. But you can do, uh, you can do jump attack, or no, you can't do jump attacks. Uh, you can throw it, take that wooden fence, I can chuck swords at you. Uh, I wouldn't call it, I'd call this a giant butcher's knife. You know, it's kind of like Ichigo's Shikai. Sangetsu! Uh, or no, no, excuse me. It's Getsuga Tensho! Oh, wait. I, I'm surprised I didn't get hit. How did, how did I not get hit? Uh, Link was caught on the... But yes, you can do spin attacks the same way you would normally do a spin attack. You can't charge a spin attack. Uh, but if you do a quick spin, yeah, and you have a lot wider range with this, which is really nice. I love doing spin attacks with this. And there's a weapon we can steal from an enemy later that has an even wider range. Oh boy, I cannot wait to get to that. But for right now, let's just get this chest. I believe it's a joy pendant. Nope, it's a small key. I keep thinking these chests hold joy pendants. It's like the second time now where I've thought, Oh yeah, this chest totally has a joy pendant. Uh, I realized something. I haven't saved ever, like since but over the last few recordings. I should do that. That is important to do. Banana. Okay, actually, on a serious note, you should save. I'm going to be saving after this episode because I don't like saving in the middle. You're probably wondering what we do here. What would we do here? Remember, if we hit the bomb, if we hit the bombs, our sword it sets it off. But we could just throw pottery. I said we can just throw pottery at it, and it does the same thing. And ta-da, ta -da, we've come around in a complete circle. You could have also just gone back the other way, and it would have looped you around here. But yeah. And with that, we can now continue this way. You can see to the right, we can't exactly do anything with that yet. And we got some uh, red choo-choos. If you're having trouble taking not taking damage, you can hold your shield up. Uh, using CR while uh, targeting them and that will also allow you to can see when that happens uh, yeah and you can see right there that I wasn't targeted onto the choo-choo but, be but because I pulled a quick spin attack it uh yeah I knew that guy was there okay now actually I thought he was on the other side but uh no I remember what I did ooh a joy pendant uh we so yes, uh, Bokoblins can drop the Joy Pendant, but yeah, you can see that I did a spin attack and that actually allowed me to 
uh, get rid of that choo-choo without actually targeting it. It's really useful. We can see that we can throw our stick all we want at this. We can threaten to take a picture of it and embarrass it on social media. But really, what you have to do is you have to burn it. And we have a switch you can step on. Blank. Thank you. Just a, I wouldn't call that much of a puzzle, but I guess it sort of counts. With that, we've, we're outside. I when, I when I first got out here when I was playing as a kid or more, I saw my sister get out here because she... I was much younger and my sister was much better at games at the time. Uh, but I was just like amazed at like, oh my god, we're outside? Because before this, I knew Ocarina of Time, which had like one main dungeon theme room. And while yes, this is a theme dungeon, it's just like the fact that you went from inside to outside and it just seemed so different. It blew my mind. It blew like little kid mine. Uh, yes, you can see where the ladder is darkened. That is an indicator about where this lava geyser will go out because it somehow hasn't burned this wood. Then again, if we have sentient talking mailboxes, then dang, the wood in this game is resilient. We Here we have a new enemy. I don't actually remember the names of these things. Uh, I'm going to say something right now, though. Be very careful where you kill them. Unless, until we have a certain item later, uh, you kind of want to lure them in because they will sort of fall back every time you hit them. So what you want to do is you want to sort of lure them in and you want to get them pushed towards... Uh, oh, come on. Okay, never mind. We, I'm not going to do that. You can see it dropped its collectible down into oblivion. And as much as thing you will know, you can just drop down there just to see. You can always swim around. No, it'll count as voiding out. Uh, that scene doesn't do anything, it's just there for fun. But yes, instead we have lava coming out. Uh, so we're just going to stand, we're going to do the smart thing and stand right next to it. And yes, you can tell when it's about to come out by the go lava, uh, gushing. But yes, those enemies, they do drop a really nice collectible. But the thing is that they're usually fought over air. Or around a cliff or something, because you know they're birds and they like high places to perch and stuff. And because of that, I often find that you'll lose their uh, collectible. But thankfully, we will be getting an item very soon, actually, that will allow us to snatch it from them. But we'll get into that when we get into that. We might not be. I don't know exactly when we're going to get to that, because I don't remember exactly when. But. Yeah. I always found this room a bit weird. It just seemed kind of random. It, it seemed a bit unnecessary, I should say. But yes, and you could... Normally, I like to pull out the other side in order to make it even and all, but you don't need to do that. I'm going to do that. There we go. Beautiful. It's a masterpiece. But yeah, with that, we could sort of just get climb up here. Admittedly, some of these puzzles do feel kind of pointless. Like, there's really no reason. Here, we have rats. Delicious! Hey, I got something real good I'll sell to you. For real. What, what'll what be real? Oh. So with that, we can buy uh, either bait or we can pay one use of our bait to buy three scoops of bait. I'm sure, I'll buy that. Of course, they're more expensive than what you can get at Beatles. And with that, Link, have you seen any filthy thieving rats around? I know they are annoying, but keep your wits about you. They are only rats. If you spread bait near their nest. Yes, he's supposed to give that to you before you do that, but I happen to know you can do that because guess what? I played this game before. Now, I'll admit, uh, I actually got stuck a bit right here on my first time through. I didn't get that you had to do that. Excuse me, I didn't get that you had to do this. See, like, A is throw for bombs, but A is only swing for the stick. It's so weird, it's so inconsistent, and it's button mapping, it's bugging me. <sighs> With that, I think we get the compass. I realize I never showed the dungeon map, so I should do that. Yes, we can see the dungeon layout here, and yes, I'm still using the Pro Controller. I'm probably going to switch to the gamepad next episode. 
Uh, you can see where the boss is. All those chests are only revealed by the compass. So that's just the general gist of where this is, of what the dungeon map does. And any rooms that are not highlighted are rooms that we have not visited at all. Well, yeah, any rooms that are highlighted are rooms that we visited. Pretty simple. Uh, in later Zelda games, they were combined into one, so you don't have to do the dungeon map. You don't have to get a dungeon map and then a compass. You can just get both at the same time, which is kind of nice, but at the same time, I like being able to get them separately. It was kind of funny when you got the compass before the chest or the dungeon map, because then you would have like a blank screen with a bunch of chest icons, but no rooms shown. Because all any room we haven't explored just won't show up on the map unless we have the dungeon map. But uh, once we've been in a room, it'll show up on our map. With that, we come out back here. And I believe... I, I don't know why I'm holding... We're going to take this rock with us. I'm going to name you... We're going to name you... Jeff. You're going to be Jeff the Rock. Go, Jeff. Be brave! <laughs> oh my god, I didn't realize that one shot in it. Jeff, you died a noble cause. <laughs> well then, again, yeah, I normally like to bait the bird in to try and get its drop, its collectible, but unfortunately, since it's literally on the edge of a cliff. Now this room is very dark, so you want to go ahead and take this with you. I feel like it was darker in the GameCube version. But we can see... Uh, I'm trying to... Thank you. Come on. Ooh. Uh, ooh. Ooh, that did a full heart of damage. Oh, okay, that's bad. I was really worried because I think the first time I ever did hero mode, I actually died here. And I might get a game over in this dungeon. The first dungeon in the game. Yeah, I often find with hero mode is that it's a lot tougher in the beginning just because it really punishes you if you mess up. Versus later in the game where one you'll have access to potions and fairies, which we haven't even gone over yet, but and you'll also have more hearts so you'll have more chances to not get hit. Granted you'll be dealing with tougher enemies, uh, but still. Uh, with that, hopefully I can, I will not die by the end of this episode. That will be my goal, to not die this episode. Or at all, really. I, I, I could go heal between episodes. But, uh, well, technically, I have an opportunity to go heal right now. Pick up this bomb and throw it over here. And not get blown up by it. I just realized that rebound. Uh, but we leave it there. And we open this jar. And what is this jar for? Well, we saw one like it earlier. That's right, it acts as warp points. So yes, we can head back whenever we want. We can now get to the beginning of the dungeon when we want. And we can go back to any time. We have to unlock the jar. So the jar will usually be blocked by something, whether it's a rock or whatever else. Uh, and you will have to uh, open the jar, and that's how you gain access to it. You can see if we look below that that was actually the main room we were in earlier. Uh, you can see right down there where those two skulls are to the right is, or three skulls, excuse me, I didn't see the other one from the glare from the lava. But uh, yeah, that's where we first entered. Uh, there are rocks falling, and something died. I heard that, but oh, wait, what? Oh. <laughs> What? Uh, no game over this episode, right, guys? Right? <laughs> oh my god. I don't know whether to be mad about that or I'll save. And we'll continue. Uh, yes, it spawns us back at the beginning of the dungeon. Thankfully, we don't lose any pro progress. It doesn't take you back to your last save like a lot of games tend to do when you get a game over. That will probably not be the last game over I get on this file, and I really should not be ignoring these guys, but I really just want to get moving. Oh my god, I was not expecting that. So I think... I don't think the falling rocks can kill things, but I think one of the, the explosions was the bat dying, and then the other one just came up and... I didn't actually mean to jump off, and I, I see 
Don't think I didn't see you. I know you're there. Oh, it went away. I kind of want revenge. Come here, little bat. I got a present for you. Wait, can the rocks actually hurt us? I don't know if those rocks can actually hurt us. Because I'm pretty sure it's just textures falling from the ceiling that don't do anything, but maybe they can hurt us. Come on, little bats. That's right. Whoa! That was like guerrilla warfare tactics. What the heck? No, wait, no, I didn't mean to do that. Oh my god, I'm gonna get a second game over at this rate. In the interest of pushing things forward, I'm going to ignore these bats. You win this time, bats. But know that one day, I will be back. Okay, we're going to do fine. We're not going to get another game over. We're going to do this. Use your shield to block attacks. Because even if it looks like it should totally go past the shield, it doesn't. And... Oh, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, what I meant to do is grab this. No? Let's see, which one of these has a Wacoblin? Is it this jar? I said, is it this jar? <laughs> yeah, if you get close enough, you'll just come out. But, uh... Smooth skills there, you completely missed me. I think that should be enough? Nope. Come on. There we go, okay. Yeah, you can tell when you take him out because you hear like that, uh, you'll hear like the more loud hitting sound effect. And of course, we can see we have an unlit torch, so what's the thing we do but burn it? But it doesn't open the way back out. Instead, we get this chest. Uh... And in this chest, this oh so special chest, we get a treasure chart! Yep. This is one of two treasure charts found in Dragon Roost. Uh, again, we don't have any way to get the treasure from treasure charts, yes, and yes, I remember that that guy was there. Uh, I think the first time I played this, I didn't know where the last guy was. Uh, but yes, and once you defeat all the enemies, that's when the door will open. So, yeah. Uh, grab this joy pendant. Please, Link. Thank you. I still find it weird that they didn't put any enemies on the second floor. Because, like, my first thought was, oh, okay, I took the enemies down on the first floor. There must be more on the second floor, not really realizing there was that one guy up in the wall. It's kind of weird. Uh, you can see there are more sticks over here. And, oh, the joy pendant. I, I still think these look like chicken legs or something. Like, th those don't look like natural sticks. Just saying. Uh, maybe it's just me. I, I see all their sticks, but when I was younger, I thought they looked like chicken legs. I didn't even know they were sticks for a long time. This room. Oh, I hate this room so much. Yes, we got a new enemy here. One I, uh, Another one I don't know the official name of. Oh, don't, don't jump into lava! God dang it, Link. Ah. <sighs> okay. So, I believe... That, if you take one of these jars and throw it at it, it'll turn into a ball. The only thing is that the recoil is going to make it come back. It's really annoying because if it goes into the lava, it'll just revive itself instantly. But now that it is in a ball, you want to keep attacking it until it dies. And that's how you take these guys out. They are really annoying, and the fact that they introduce this in a really tiny platform where it's really easy to knock it back into the lava where it's invulnerable. Uh, it just, it's really frustrating. But yes, what you want to do is you want to set a water jar here, and the lava geyser will lift this thing because logic and physics. But yes, it's really frustrating. I really think that was a bad way to introduce that enemy. Uh, I will look up its name off screen for you guys, but I don't know it off the top of my head. <sighs> yep. 
and we can see there's a big imposing door that looks like the place to go in fact if we pull out our map we can see the boss is just beyond there unfortunately we don't exactly have a way across here just yet though we do have skulls here we can take out uh but we also have some rocks we can blow up and with that we have another jar heading back to the beginning go ahead and get this and with that we have our next destination so next time on Legend of Zelda Wind Waker we'll be heading through that door and heading through the rest of Dragon Moose Cavern and hopefully uh, reuniting with Medley she did say she was going to an altar at the top of the mountain and we haven't exactly been there yet well thank you guys so much for watching we'll get to see Link on the brink of death uh, I'll go heal off screen so thank you guys so much for watching and until next time